Hey guys, a question. When do we need to have what we want to, which one do we want to choose? By? Oh, uh, end of next week. So do we start end of next week or by the end of next week? So by the end of next week. So I just want you to look at the categories of the, of the models. You choose a category and then I'm going to send you a model after that. Okay. And I just saw you next week. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
That's what I get for playing with the controls. <laughs> Press the wrong button. Press the wrong button. I push mute, but then the whole thing shut down. All right, it's four o'clock, so let's go and get started. All right, good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Good, good. Midterms week, so uh, you know I know you guys are, are busy, so thank you guys. Uh, why are you guys laughing? You guys had a midterm just now? I see, I see. Okay, well, it's done. <laughs> uh, you know, 
just like a, you know, the good thing about a lot of negative experiences in your life, a lot of them end eventually. And so that's always something you can uh, look forward to. <laughs> okay, um, so today uh, we're not taking a midterm. So today we are continuing on with our set of lecture notes on lump parameter modeling. Um, and so we ended kind of right in the middle of an example. And so we're gonna finish that up. And I have quite a few other examples that we're gonna talk about today as well, okay? Uh, hopefully we'll, we we finish it, but uh, but if not, it's okay. We can finish up the rest on Tuesday. Uh, announcement: Remember the um, your uh, your Sambastra tutorial is due very soon, and so make sure you are you are working on that. Okay. Uh, and if you need any help with the with the tutorial in terms of you know getting the software to work or if it's crashing or anything, just uh, just let me know. Uh, I'm always happy to help you out with that. Okay. All right. Um, and so I think that's every that's it for me for now. And so are there any questions I can answer before we get started? Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get rolling. Okay. Let me go ahead and scroll up a little bit and uh, kind of and kind of like pick up where we left off. Okay. And so we were looking at this RC circuit from last time, right? So we we're looking at a uh, basically a circuit with simply just a resistor and a capacitor. Uh, so this is a lump parameter model that we're using to represent a Winkessel. Uh, and what we're interested in is we want to derive the differential equation that governs this, this behavior. Okay? Uh, and so that's what a lot of these, that's what a lot of this unit is going to be all about. So you're going to be given a circuit, uh, or you might design your own circuit too. And the goal is then to derive what are the differential equations that, that guide that circuit um, based on circuit loss. Okay? And we were right in the middle of applying, you know, um, Kirchhoff's current rule, which is another way to say conservation of mass. Okay, and so what we were applying it at this kind of forward junction that we have here. Okay? okay, and what we were saying is that if we look at this junction and we break it up into the three different paths that come into it, we have a flow that's coming in, and so the flow that's coming in is our uh, is our boundary condition here, which is Q of t. And then leaving the leaving the junction are is the flow over the resistor QR, and the flow over the capacitor QC. Okay, and so if we put it in equation form, then our conservation of mass equation is the form. So we have Q of t is equal to QR plus QC. Okay, where the flow over the resistor QR is equal to the difference in pressure divided by the resistance. And so that's given by our Ohm's law, right? Uh, whereas the flow going into the capacitor is related to the time, um, uh, the time difference of, of, or the time rate of change of pressure. Okay, so we have QC is equal to C times DP dt. Right, and that's about where we left off. And so what we're gonna do next is we're going to basically massage this equation a little bit, and we're gonna end up with our differential equation. Okay, and so that's uh, that's kind of where we left off. And so, are there are there any kind of questions? I know we kind of ended a little bit abruptly last time. And so, are there any questions about how we got to how we got to this point? Okay, so let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. Then. Okay, so um, you know we have that equation there. And so let me go ahead and plug in those expressions. And so we have Q of t is equal to uh, delta p divided by r plus c times dp dt, right? Where again, this right here is our q sub r, and this right here is our q sub c, okay? Flow over the resistor and flow over the capacitor. Okay, let's look at this term first, okay? So we have, we have delta p, right? And so what that delta p there represents is the fact that if you have a resistor, We know that the flow over the resistor, the flow over the resistor is going to be Q, which is equal to the upstream pressure P1 minus the downstream pressure P2, all divided by R, right? And so the delta P that we have there represents this difference in pressure that we have right here, okay? And so it's just whatever pressure is upstream on the resistor minus whatever pressure is downstream on the resistor, and we just divide that by the resistance. Um, and so let's let's look and see if we can plug in something more specific than delta p for here. Okay, so let's go back to our, our circuit. Okay. Right. And so upstream of the resistor, we have a pressure. We'll, we'll just call it p. Okay. 
right? And so we have an upstream pressure of P, okay? And then downstream of the resistor, you know, I want you to look at this, okay? And so we have a direct connection between the back end of the resistor and ground, right? So remember what the symbol means. And so ground basically means we have zero, zero pressure there, okay? And so if I, if I were to kind of draw this, um, this, this uh, situation down here, okay? Where upstream of our resistance, we have um, pressure of P. And then downstream here, we have ground, okay? And whenever we have ground, the pressure here Pressure is zero there. Okay. Okay. And so if we take this, if we take this result back up to our Ohm's law equation up here, what we can say is that P2, P2 is going to equal two to zero. Okay. Because P2 is essentially ground. Okay. And so with that in mind, um, you know, we can go ahead and simplify that expression a little bit. And so we have Q of T is equal to P divided by R plus C dP dt. Okay. Where at this, at, at this point, it's important to note that this P right here and this P are the same same pressure. Okay. Let me let me just draw the circuit again down here, so I don't have to keep scrolling up. Okay. Okay. So why so why do we know that they're the same pressure? So if I draw our circuit again. All right, so there's our circuit again. And what we said was that P was this pressure up here, okay? Since this P is also connected directly to the capacitor or the upstream of the capacitor by a wire, that means the pressure that's upstream of the resistor is gonna be the same pressure that's felt by the capacitor as well, okay? Because remember, there's, there's, one, um, you know, there's one rule that we follow in circuits. And so if there are two points or two locations, If two locations are directly connected by a wire, okay. and so in other words, there's no there's no components in between them. So there's no resistances, there's no capacitors or, or anything like that. Then by definition, those points have to be at the same at the same voltage, or in other cases, it's going to be the same pressure. And so if I were to highlight this, uh, you know, this entire part of the circuit right here, okay. right? And so everything that I've connected in blue right there, all of that has to have the same pressure because they're all connected by just simply a wire. And so that's why we can make that equivalence where you know the pressure that we're that we're um, supplying onto the resistance, the P and the P over R, that's the same pressure that's going to be applied onto the capacitor as well. So dP dt. Okay. So those two are the same, and that's important because that's that's what we're going to use to solve this uh, solve this equation. Yeah. What is the payoff with Uh, what's again? It's just connected with the wires and the points. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Question. So, in other words, it's constant pressure throughout the circuit. Just only for the places that are connected by the wire. Divided the places. Wait a second. Divided the places. 
Um, so any, anything that's connected by a wire without, without anything in between, then those have to have the same pressure. But that's not the same pressure throughout because as soon as we cross over this resistance right here, it changes, right? So everything over here, everything over here is the same pressure because they're connected by a wire, but that's different than the blue because then you have to cross over a component too. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in fact, everything that I've highlighted in green right here, they're all at zero pressure because they're also connected to ground. Okay. Remember, ground is, is P is equal to zero. Okay, and so now that we've established that these two pressures are the same, we can now start working with this equation right here to solve for, um, or you know, this is this is going to be our, our differential equation that we that we solve. Okay. All right. Any other questions on on this? Oh, question in the chat. Sorry. Get my mouse. Oh, stressed. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I missed that message. Earlier. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and, and, and massage this equation a little bit more, okay? So we're, we're, we're basically there. And so remember when we, when we started this problem, we said that there is one differential equation that we need to solve for, because we have one capacitor and lo and behold, here it is, okay? And so we have one differential equation. It's a differential equation because it has a derivative in there, okay? And so the only thing we have left to do here is just to kind of simplify it a little bit if you, if you want, okay? Although, you know, this part is kind of up to personal preference. Uh, but usually, you know, for, for these kinds of differential equations, the standard form uh, of, way, of the way to present them is to um, basically have your, your derivative term uh, have a coefficient of one, okay? Um, you know, it, it, it just kind of helps with, uh, um, you know, with standardizing, especially when you start looking at um, uh, systems of uh, systems of, of differential equations. Um, it helps to have the the um, the uh, the derivative part here have a coefficient of one just for just for uh, um, just for programming sake. Okay. And so to that end, I'm going to take this equation and divide it by C. And so if we divide it by C, and then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around just so it's in a bit more of a standard form, we end up with the following. So we have dP dt plus P divided by RC is equal to Q of T divided by C, okay? Right, and then that's, and then that's it. And so this is our, this is our ODE. Right, so these so these lump parameter uh, modeling questions are they proceed kind of just like this. And so you uh, you're going to be given a circuit, um, and then I'm going to ask you you know, what are the differential equations, and then you're going to go through and apply things like conservation of mass. Uh, later on, you'll you'll we'll see an example with an inductor, and so you'll use the inductor equation in order to get differential equations like like this. Okay. okay. And so now that we have this differential equation, you know what's uh, what what can we do with it, right? So it, it's great that we have this equation, but um, you know how do we actually use this for something useful? Well, I think it's it's good to uh, to talk about you know what are some of the things that you're given, uh, and what are the things that you're going to be solving for. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so in these and and when you and so when you actually go to solve these equations, you know usually you're going to be given the values of all the circuit elements. And so the values of the resistances, the capacitances, you know, those will just be numbers, and those will be numbers that you plug in. Okay. 
And so for the sake of, you know, for the sake of that, we'll assume here that R and C are constants. So those are just parameter values, and so they just end up being numbers. Okay. The other thing that you're going to be given in these kinds of problems are uh, what I like to call the input function. Okay. Um, and that usually takes the form of some kind of either Q of T or P of T. Okay, and so in this case, we're given Q of T. Okay, and so if you recall, you know, that Q of T, if I can come back up to the circuit right here, Q of T was the amount of flow that's coming into our, our circuit. Okay, and so that's something that we have to prescribe in order to solve this, this problem. And so that has to be given to you to, in order for you to solve this ODE as well, okay? And so what these input functions represent is they represent um, either the flow or pressure that's usually coming into the circuit at one point. And so usually, you know, because because we're we're talking about cardiovascular systems here, and, and cardiovascular systems are pulsatile in nature, this will be some kind of oscillating function usually. And so, you know, I think the simplest oscillating function you can think of is like a sine or a cosine. Okay. And so, some examples, you know, let's say just for the sake of argument, Q of t, you know, let's say it's equal to seventy plus uh, thirty sine of pi t. Okay. And so that's one that's one function that we uh, you know that we can specify. Um, you know your your heartbeats aren't exactly a sine wave, but you know the sine wave does exhibit a lot of the same behaviors, so where it's going to go up and down. Okay, um, so it's not a perfect approximation, but it's better it's better than like a polynomial or an exponential or something like that. Okay? And so what does that represent? And so you know let's you know we we haven't really connected this to uh, to fluid mechanics yet, but you know let's say that we're using this RC circuit. Um, to model your aorta. Okay. So this is all kind of an aside. So you know we're kind of taking an aside from this problem, uh, but I want to kind of give some context to all the parameters here because you know I want you to kind of understand what each of these kind of parameters come from and what they represent. Okay. And so aorta looks something like this, right? right? So you have kind of a, a tube that kind of arches over like that. And remember the aorta is the biggest blood vessel in your body and it's directly connected to your heart. And so your heart would be right here, okay? And so when your heart squeezes, okay, when your heart contracts, it's gonna eject blood out into the aorta, okay? And so in these situations, we can, we can represent the flow rate of blood coming out of the heart with that Q of T function. Okay. And then the aorta itself, we represent with the circuit. Okay. 
And so if I were to redraw this uh, circuit here, okay. so here we have ground. And so this part here represents the aorta or it's a, it's a model or it's a representation of the aorta. Whereas the input to the model, this is our heart, okay? Okay. And the flow rate out of the heart, we represent that with Q of T, okay? So that, so that part's pretty, you know, that part's important because I, I want you to kind of, you know, the mathematics of course are, are important and how we solve this is, is important, but you know, I want you to remember what they kind of represent, okay? So whenever you have a circuit like this, you have to have some kind of input condition, you have to have some kind of inlet, um, you know, and, you know, and I wanted to show you what those inlets basically represent. Okay, any questions on, on this? Okay. All right. And so with that in mind, um, you know, we can come back up to our circuit right here. And so we have basically a first order ODE. Okay. So you have DPDT plus P over RC is equal to Q of T divided by C, right? Uh, and so normally at this point, you know, you, we can turn this over to MATLAB and we can, we can use MATLAB to solve the ODE, right? And so I'll, I'll show you how to do that later using the ODE 45 function. Uh, but since this is just one, this is just one equation, we can go ahead and solve this by, by hand. Okay? Um, and so for single equations like this, you can use basically the techniques that you learned in um, EGB 308, or I think it was math 250A, 250B, okay? Because uh, this, this one's not too bad. It's just a first order equation, okay? And so if you're, if you're curious about how I, how I derive this solution, I'm not gonna go through the solution procedure, um, but I use a technique called integrating factors. Okay. Hopefully that, does that sound familiar from, uh, from your previous classes, integrating factors? Yes, no, it's okay. I've, honestly, when I, I learned these when I was in college and then I forgot about them when I went to grad school. And then when, I, and when they told me to teach 308, I had to learn them all over again. And so, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that you can kind of forget. Okay, but by but through using integrating factors, we get the following uh, we get the following function. Okay. So we have P of T, which is our pressure on the capacitor or pressure on the resistor as a function of time, is equal to e to the minus t over R C multiplied by the integral from zero to t okay, of Q of tau divided by C times e to the tau over rc d tau plus p of zero, okay? And this e to the minus t over rc multiplies that whole thing, okay? Bless you. Okay. And so without specifying an exact form for, for, the, uh, for the input function Q of T, this is about as far as we can take it. But if you wanted to solve this even more exactly, you can take you know, an example Q of T, right? So let's say that we have 70 times uh, 30 um, sine of, uh, of, of uh, pi T, okay? And so if you, plug that, uh, if you plug that function into Q of T, then you can carry out this integral and actually solve for, for it.
Right? And so you're probably also curious what that P of zero is. So P of zero here is our initial condition. Or in other words, the initial pressure on the capacitor. All right, so that's our humble RC circuit. And so that has, you know, um, the following solution, which you can, um, you know, you can verify and, and see to make sure that it's, that's the case. All right, any questions on this before we move on to, uh, to another example? Okay. All right, so let's do, let's do a little, bit, a little bit more complicated example. So let's do one where we have two equations instead of, instead of one. And so to get that second equation, I'm just going to add an inductor to this uh, to the system. Okay, so this is going to be an LRC Winkessel circuit. All right, so that looks like this. So we have a inlet point right here. Then we're going to come up to an inductor. Okay. Then this path is going to split. And then we're going to come up to ground right here. Okay. And so we have our inductor has a value of L, our resistor has a value of R, our capacitor has a value of C. Okay. okay. Here we have an in, we don't have an inlet flow rate, but instead we have an inlet pressure. Okay. And so this PI of T here is our input pressure. And then at this, at this junction right here, uh, we have P, I'll call it P sub C, because this is the, gonna be the pressure that's on the capacitor, okay? In addition to P sub C, I also, we also have the flow that's going over the inductor, and so that's gonna be Q L, okay? And so the reason I'm, I'm highlighting P sub C and Q sub L is that these are gonna be the, um, the unknowns uh, that we're gonna solve for using our equations, okay? And so in this problem, we're gonna derive the set of ODEs that solve for, oops, Q sub L and P sub C. Okay. Oh, in this problem, I actually give you a, uh, a value for P, PI. Okay? And so let's say that PI of T, this is equal to 100 plus 20 sine of pi T. Okay. And so that's going to be the functional form of, for PI of T. All right, any questions on the uh, on the problem setup? Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and run through our uh, run through our methods for this. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to count the number of inductors and capacitors that we have. Okay. And so in this problem, you can see we have one inductor. And so we have the, uh, the inductor coil uh, at the inlet and we also have one capacitor. Okay. Right. And so if we add these together, we get two, two such uh, elements. And remember what this tells us is that, you know, for each inductor and each capacitor that we have, it's going to give us one ODE. And so in total, we're going to solve for two ODEs in this example. So 
So now that we know how many equations that we need to solve for, let's go ahead and start deriving these equations, right? So let's let's start with the inductor because the inductor is pretty simple, okay? Uh, so for inductors, what you can do is you can use um, basically the inductor equation, okay? And so if you recall, you know, an inductor looks something like this, right? Where uh, what we usually know about the inductor is that we have a pressure upstream on the inductor and a pressure downstream on the inductor, okay? And we have a flow across the inductor as well, QL, okay? And so what the inductor equation basically tells us is that the time rate of change of the flow on the inductor as a function of time is equal to one divided by the inductance multiplied by the pressure difference across the inductor. Okay. So that was the equation that we discussed, you know, when we talked about all the different kinds of elements that we had. Okay. So the inductor was uh, which is simply this one right here. Okay. okay. And so for this particular problem, you know, we have, um, you know, we have, we actually have everything um, that's needed already. Okay. And so the upstream pressure on the inductor And so the image above is P1, okay? In this particular problem, uh, the upstream pressure on this inductor is actually our input condition, right? So our input condition is a PI of T. And so our upstream pressure is simply gonna be PI of T, okay? We also know the downstream pressure. And so the downstream pressure is directly connected to the capacitor. And so what that tells us is that the downstream pressure on the inductor is the same as the pressure it's on the capacitor. Okay? And so that's P sub C. All right, so let's go ahead and plug these in. And then we're gonna uh, use that to get our first, our first ODE for this, for this problem. Okay, and so our first ODE is simply going to be the time rate of change of the flow on the capacitor dQ dt is equal to one divided by L multiplied by the upstream pressure pi of t minus p sub c. Okay. And so to get this equation, remember all we did was we took our usual inductor equation and then we just fit in the pressures that, uh, um, that were being applied on, on this problem. All right, any questions on, uh, any questions on how we got this? Okay. All right, so that's the, that's the inductor equation. And so for the, for the capacitor equation, you know, let's do the same thing that we did before and let's apply conservation of mass or Kirchhoff's current law, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Okay. And so just like in the last example, you know, we have a fork in the road, okay? And so we have a flow rate that's coming in and we have a flow that's gonna go over the resistor and a flow that's gonna go over the capacitor QC, okay? And so if we apply conservation of mass, this tells us that Q sub L is equal to Q sub R plus Q sub C, okay? And so exactly the same as before. The difference here being that instead of an input condition, the flow rate that's coming into this junction is going to come directly from the inductor, right? And so the inductor is kind of the one that's kind of blocking the path. And so whatever flow that gets through the inductor, that's going to be, um, you know, going into our circuit, okay? That means that this Q, this QL that's coming into this, this junction is the same QL that's, that's up here. So these are the same. Right. <clears throat> and 
And that's going to be really important when we go to solve them, because, um, you know, what we're going to say is that, you know, because this, the same variable appears in both equations, uh, one way we can say that is that these equations are coupled. And so we can't solve them individually. We have to solve them at the same time. Okay, uh, but, that's not the, but that's not the only degree of coupling that we're going to have. Okay? And so just like we did last time, let's go ahead and plug in for QR and QC. Okay, so QR is equal to delta P divided by the resistance. Okay, and Q sub C is going to be C times the time rate of change of pressure on the, on the capacitor. Okay, it's Q sub C. And so let's go ahead, let me go ahead and kind of clean this up just so it's all in, in one place. And so we have Q sub L is equal to uh, delta P divided by R plus C DPC over DT, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing with the, with the pressure difference on the, on the uh, in, uh, resistor, okay? So remember the, the, uh, the outlet of this resistor here is ground as well. And so the downstream pressure on the resistance is, is zero, okay? And so what I can do then is I can replace this with simply just the upstream pressure PC, okay? And I do this since downstream is ground. All right, so we're just about done. And so let me go ahead and just rearrange this a little bit. Okay. And so I'm going to take this expression here divided by C, okay, so get to, to get the time derivative by itself. And so we have DPC uh, DT is equal to 1 over C times Q sub L minus PC divided by And so this here is our second. Okay. And so one more thing I want to highlight uh, before we actually go to solve this is, um, you know, all the PCs that you see there, they're all the same, okay? And so, um, you know, we have a PC that, that's showing up in the first equation, and we have PCs that show up in the second equation as well, okay? And so whenever you have this, this you know, both equations have variables that are in each other's, um, you know, in, in each other's equations, what we say is that these equations are coupled, And so whenever you have a coupled system like this or a coupled set of equations, that means you can't solve one without the other. And so you can't, um, uh, what in, in the business we call it decoupling. And so you can't uh, decouple these equations. And so the only way to solve the system is to solve both equations at the same time. <laughs> And so in other words, another way that you can say this is that um, instead of just a single um, ODEs, what we have is a system of ordinary differential equations. Okay. Did you guys learn how to solve systems of ODEs in, in your previous classes before? I know uh, it's, in the, it's in the textbooks for 308, and I, I've, always, I've always thought about it whenever I, whenever I teach 308, um, but I, I've never actually done it before. But I'm curious to see if, if anyone's ever 
done it in a previous class. Yeah, calculus classes and stuff we go over it. Okay, okay, okay. So it's so it's you know you guys are at least familiar with the concept then. We're familiar with the concept, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. In terms of methods and how to solve these by hand, I, I I actually don't remember them either. It's like the it's like the integrating factors, and so don't worry. You know, we're, I'm not going to make you solve these by hand. You know. Uh, we're going to use MATLAB to solve these for us, okay. and so that's the next step. Actually, so the next step we're going to we're going to jump on to uh, MATLAB here on the computer, uh, and I'll show you how to set this up in, in MATLAB. Okay. Uh, but before but before I do that, are there are there any questions on how I obtained um, any of this stuff? Okay, so let me go ahead and jump on MATLAB, and so I I posted I posted some um, sample codes online. Um, and so you can, those are, those are available for you to download, but, but don't worry about downloading them right now. It's, they're, they're fully complete. And so there's nothing for you to, uh, um, to download or to, uh, to fill in right now. Okay. Okay. So let me just kind of show you where they are. And so, you know, I, I posted kind of two full, uh, two full examples here. Okay. And so if you go to week six on our, on our page right here, you'll see that I've posted kind of two sets of codes. Okay. And so I have LPN example one, LRC, okay, uh, with the accompanying helper function here, okay. And so this is the example we just did. So these, so these two go together. So make sure you download both at the same time. Okay. And then these, these other two also go together, okay. And so we're gonna do this example afterwards. Next example, but you guys, you guys get the point. Okay? And so for this one, I, I've downloaded these two files onto um, onto this computer here. Okay, and let me go ahead and show you, um, you know, how these two how these two files work. Okay, should go away. Okay, All right. So let's look at uh, let's look let's look at ODE Funked first. Okay, and so uh, what you'll see is that there is a um, File they're called example ODE funct. Okay. And what this file is, is up to is that this is where, or this is the file. A better keyboard arrangement here. So this is the file where you will define your system of ODEs. And I'm sorry, let me let me make the font a bit bigger so it's a bit easier to see. There we go. Is that is that big enough or is that obnoxiously big? Big enough. Big enough. Okay. Okay. Find your system of OEs. Okay. And so I think this is this is a good this is a good file to start with because it's uh you know kind of intuitively when you're working on these problems, this is this is where you're gonna go first, right? And so you've you've just kind of work these out by hand and you have the system of ODEs and so now you're ready to plug it into MATLAB okay and so uh I want you to kind of start with the syntax up here and so notice how you know we we start this MATLAB um, script with a with the keyword called function okay and so function is is a keyword that basically say that basically states that this entire file right here it's not going to be a full script on its own uh but all it does is just it it defines a um, what what MATLAB likes to call like a subroutine, okay? And so this subroutine is one that's going to be needed, um, you know, to solve our ODEs, okay? And so for you know when you're writing kind of your own code, so the, the next homework the next homework that I'll assign you guys is is for up parameter modeling. And so when you guys are writing your own codes, um, you know you can just copy this exact same syntax up here. So you can just kind of copy this code. Okay. And so the next the next thing uh, that you'll see here is that I have a um, I have lines here to define the input function, okay? And remember we had an input function called um, pi, okay? And so that function was called twenty, or it was defined as twenty times sine of pi times t plus a hundred, okay? And so you need to make sure you define your input function here. Next thing you're going to specify here are the parameter values, and so we have uh, our inductance value, our capacitance value, and the resistance value. Okay. 
Uh, so don't worry about these exact numbers just yet. Um, you know, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about how to how to set these later. Um, but you know, for now, I'm just going to give it to you. Okay. And then from here, um, you need to what I like to call kind of label the unknowns. Okay. And so if you if you look back if you look back in your notes and you look back at the two equations that we derived, you know, we had one equation where uh, you know the derivative or the, the 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 variable of interest was q sub l, right? And so we can define a variable called q sub l, and that's is going to, this is going to be equal to y at one. Okay. And then the other the other variable that we had was the pressure on the capacitor, which here I've labeled p sub one, but it should be p sub c. Okay. Okay. And this y function is is kind of defined in the in the arguments here. Okay. But you but again you can kind of just follow this exact same syntax as as here. Okay. And so for systems where you're going to have more ODEs than two. Um, and so the next example will have, uh, actually, I think the next example also has two. Uh, but if you have if you have more ODEs that you can solve for, then you can you can just add more add more variables here. Okay. And so from here, this is this is where you actually define your ODEs, your ODE system. Okay. okay. And so first thing you need to do is you need to create a variable to store all your all your derivatives. Okay. And so here you can see I've created a function called dydt. So dydt stands for the derivatives of all your of all your unknowns, and it's going to be equal to a zeros function, where this zeros function basically creates it creates an empty vector. Okay. Okay. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set dydt of one. Okay. And so this is our first ODE. Okay. And so if you look back in the notes, you can see that our first ODE was dqdt is equal to one divided by L multiplied by the input pressure minus the capacitor pressure. Okay. And that's exactly what I have here in the code. And so in the code here, I have one divided by L multiplied by PI. PI is our input pressure minus P sub one, which is our capacitor pressure. Okay. okay. One thing you can do, and so notice how, as I'm writing this code, I'm, I'm kind of labeling stuff. And so, you know, don't be afraid to do that as well, because I think the thing that um, I mean, one of the many things that I think people find difficult about programming is kind of getting lost in kind of this alphabet soup of variables. And so um, it helps, you know, at least for me, it helps a lot, especially writing bigger programs to kind of label what everything is. Okay? So this Q sub L, let me just call this flow on the inductor. And this P sub one here, this is the pressure on the capacitor. Okay. And so that's our first ODE. And so our first ODE is um, you know, given right there. And then our second ODE will be defined on the second line right there. So if dy dt at two is equal to one divided by C multiplied by Q sub L minus P1 divided by R1. And so this is our second ODE. OK. okay. And so that, and so that basically, you know, what we've done here is we basically defined a MATLAB subroutine um, to, to uh, that defines our system of ODEs. Okay. And so when you're doing this on your own, you can you can copy kind of a lot of the same syntax that I, I've given you here. Um, of course, but of course you would have to change the you know, first of all change the parameter values, and you would of course kind of change these equations as, as you see fit as well. All right. Any questions on uh, any questions on this? Okay. All right. I mean, this is given to you, and so you know, you, you don't have to take any pictures. It's 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 literally there for you on online. <laughs> um, but if you want to take pictures, you can do that too. Okay. And so the next thing we have here is the is the MATLAB script that's actually going to that's going to run it. Okay. And so for a lot of these two, you can you can just kind of copy the same syntax. Okay. But I'm just going to give you kind of an explanation of what each of these lines what each of these lines do. Okay. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with the time period. And so for the time period, um, this basically specifies um, the starting and ending times um, that you want to solve. Okay. And my nose is running like crazy. Okay. All right. And what so you could. Once it gets back to ten. So this. So the left code right here. This is where you're going to specify your system of ODEs. Okay. Uh, and so, and so the equations that you basically derive, you can you you put them in this left in this left code right here. Um, but this code itself, you can't run it by itself, and so you need to have um, 
what I, I, I like to call it's kind of like a pilot code. And so the one on the right is kind of the, the code that actually runs the whole thing. And the main reason I, I have this format is, you know, we're using this function right here in MATLAB code OD45. And OD45 has a very kind of specific way that it likes to do things. And so, you know, that's why if you're gonna use OD45, you need to have kind of a, um, a subroutine MATLAB script as well as a driver MATLAB script okay, or, or a pilot. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You can run in one file by putting it at the function at the bottom. Okay, that's that's good. Uh, that's good to know. I've I think I've seen that before, but I, I've never actually done it in practice. But I'll, I'll have to experiment with it, uh, you know, later on. Okay. Um, time period. Okay, and so this uh, this this part right here basically specifies the amount of time that you want to solve. Okay, and so you can see here I have two entries in this in this vector, and so I have a zero and a five. Okay, and so what we're basically telling MATLAB is that we want to solve our system between um, zero seconds and five seconds. Okay. So basically we're, we're running our simulation or, or we're running our, um, you know, we're running our model for five seconds of, of time, okay? Okay, and so if you wanted to, if you wanted to run this for more time, you can, you can increase this here. And so you can increase this to, um, you can increase this to 10. So if you wanna solve it for 10 seconds, um, but you know, for now I'll keep it at five. Okay. okay. Next thing we need to specify is the initial conditions. And so if you remember from the, um, from the RC circuit that we, um, that we did, um, our solution depended on the initial value for our pressure, right? And so here we have two variables. And so we have the flow on the capacitor and, or excuse me, the flow on the inductor and the pressure on the capacitor, okay? And so we need to specify an initial condition for both, okay? So let me go ahead and write that in a comment. First, value is flow on inductor and second is the initial pressure on capacity. And so it's important to kind of keep all the variables here in always the same order. So if you derive the the, um, the flow on the capacitor or the excuse me the flow on the inductor first, you know always make that be uh, the first the first value here. And then the other thing will be the, uh, the other variable, okay? So make sure you kind of keep the order of the equations always the same, okay? Okay, and so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to plot this or, or actually solve it, okay? And so this is where we're gonna make a, a call to the special OD45 function, okay? Uh, and so if you've never used this function before, let me kind of go ahead and define it here, okay? So OD45 is a special MATLAB function that solves ODEs or systems of components. So it's really useful because you know ODEs are, are one of those things that are that are difficult to solve, and so this OD, ODE forty five function is um, you know really useful for that. Okay. okay, and so in terms of the syntax for uh, for it, so actually let me go ahead and, and do this just so you can kind of see everything at once. Okay. okay. All right. And so for this, you know, this is something you could probably just kind of copy, you know, kind of copy just kind of exactly as I have it here. Okay. So you have ODE45 and you use this and sign T comma Y. You call the uh, the function that you defined here. Okay. Then you give the time period as well as the initial conditions. Okay? And then MATLAB will do its magic and solve and solve these equations. Okay. Um, okay. Um, any questions on, on any of this so far? What are some of like the limitations of OD45? Isn't there like a bunch of them? Yeah, there is. And so, you know, there ODE45 is not the only one out there. So there's ODE23 um, and ODE45S and some and something like that. ODE45, I think, is the most general one. Um, and so there, there are certain um, ODE systems where depending on the values of your parameters, it can it can go something, it can have a, a property called like a very stiff system. So that's usually when you have very high differences in the in the in the rates of change, and so OD forty five will struggle with with those kinds of systems, um, but those are usually very um, niche situations. So for most for most OD systems where you know the parameter values are are more or less reasonable, then forty five should work pretty well. Should work pretty well for you. 
it's pretty smart. It'll it'll choose time step sizes and it'll choose um, you know parameters um, you know to solve the system. But yeah, but it does have some limitations. But those are more for kind of specialized problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so after we called OD45, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plot the results. Okay. Uh, and so after you solve, basically OD45 is going to spit out your is going to spit out your um, um, your uh, variables of interest into this variable called y. And so all that I'm doing here is I'm just extracting the values of y and I'm putting them in specific variables. Okay. And then from here, I'm just going to plot. Them, okay. And so figure one, figure one that's going to pop up, that's going to be the flow through the inductor as a function of time. And then figure two that pops up, that's going to be the pressure on the capacitor as a function of time. Okay. So let me go ahead and run this. And so because it's solving an ODE, it does take a bit of time, okay, but not too much. Okay. And let me kind of bring these down here. Okay. Right. And here are our results. Let me flip it. Okay. So figure one right here, you can see this is the flow that's on the inductor. Okay. So you can see it has the sinusoidal shape. Okay. And the pressure on the capacitor also kind of has the sinusoidal shape. Okay. Um, and so the reason we have a sinusoidal shape here is because our input was, was sinusoidal, right? And so remember, our input was a, a basically a sine function. And so in those kinds of situations, eventually what you would expect is you would expect all the behavior of the circuit to match, you know, what the input looks like, okay? But if you look at kind of the initial phase here, so if you look at these, you know, these kind of peaks here, these look a little bit different than the other ones, right? And so, and so that the reason for that is that because of the, uh, you know, because of the inductor and the capacitor, this is kind of like a warming up period for the circuit kind of getting used to this, this input, okay? Um, you know, and so this circuit, you know, has this kind of solution and we solve for it, um, you know, almost exactly with the, with the OD45, okay? And so if you didn't have OD45, you would have to use an analytical method for solving a system of ODEs, um, you know, which is possible, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world, but, you know, usually it's a lot easier to set up a code to solve it for you. Um, and the nice thing is you get these nice, beautiful graphs um, from it as well. Okay. okay. And so I, I know that was really fast, um, you know, and, you know, I think, I think what you'll see is that when you actually go to use these, these, these codes, they're, you know, they're easier to use than I think maybe you might, you might be thinking right now. Um, and so it all, it all just comes, comes down to just kind of giving it a try yourself. And so, you know when you're you know when you're going to uh, to work on the next homework, uh, which I think I should have ready for you guys sometime next week. Uh, you know, go back to these examples and kind of go through you know this example as well as how I set up the codes. And I think if you kind of you know go up, go through it a bit slowly, then um, hopefully it'll be clear about how to set these up, and you can do them for the rest of the homework homework prompts as well. Okay. All right. Any any questions on this before we return back to the uh, uh, return back to the notes? Okay. All right. And so, you know, I, I know that was a lot of information, um, you know, but, but these codes are, are there for you. And so, you know, definitely make use of them as we, as we go forward. Okay. Let me go ahead and stop sharing and come back here. Yeah. So I can solve more for so what's the limit? Not particularly how many you can solve. There's no limit. Okay. And so you can solve as many as, as, as many as you can dream of. Um, <laughs> And so the function itself doesn't have a limit, but your computer does. And so, you know, um, of course you can, you can imagine that the more ODEs that you try to solve at the same time, it's gonna take the, your computer longer and longer to do that. And so, you know, I should say, it's not your computer. I'd say the limitation is, is your patience. And so how long you're willing to wait for, for the solutions. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's, let's, do, let's do one more example. Cause you know, I think, I think with these kinds of problems, you know, it's, you know, we can, we can kind of talk about it as much as we can, but I think it really helps just to look at a few examples um, just because it, it uh, helps kind of um, settle things a lot. Okay, and so in this example here, we're going to step up the complexity just by one more step, and we're going to add a second resistor. Okay? And so this is going to be LRRC. Okay. 
So we have an inductor here. We have an upstream resistance R1. We have a downstream resistance R2. We have a capacitance right here, okay? We have a flow that's going on the inductor, so we will call this Q sub L. And just like last time, we have a pressure on the capacitance, we'll call that P sub C, okay? And also just like last time, we're gonna have an input pressure here. Okay, so we have PI of T. With our input here, PI of T, has the value of 30 cosine of pi times T plus 95, okay? Okay. And so once again, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, tasked with the, uh, um, you know, with the, uh, um, with the goal of deriving a set of ODEs that govern this system. So not, so not too, too different from the last example, but, you know, but we have kind of a, a dual splitting of the paths here. Okay. And so that's going to be, that's going to be interesting. Okay. okay. And so just like last time, we're going to count the number of inductors and capacitors that we have. And so you can see here, we have one inductor and one capacitor. Right? And so just like the last example, uh, we're going to need to solve for two equations. All right, so let's start with the inductor equation. Okay. And so for inductors, remember what we need from an inductor is we need to know what the upstream pressure on the inductor is and what the downstream pressure is. Okay. okay. And so the upstream pressure here is the pressure that's on the upstream side of the inductor. Okay. And since the inductor here is connected directly to the input, we know that this input pressure is PI of T, okay, upstream pressure. Okay. Whereas the downstream pressure, that's the pressure on the back end of the inductor, you can see here that that's P sub C. Okay. All right, so taking that information into account, then we can go ahead and write our first ODE. And so our first ODE is simply just dql dt is equal to one divided by L multiplied by PI of T, the upstream pressure minus P sub C, the downstream pressure. Okay. And so there, there's our first, our first ODE. And so for inductors, if, if you know what the upstream pressure and the downstream pressure are, then you know it's it's all just a matter of kind of plugging, plugging them in, plugging them in. All right, any questions on how we how we obtain that? Okay. All right. So now let's work on the capacitor. And so you know, our our usual um, you know, our usual uh, method for finding capacitors. And so we have to apply conservation of mass. So this will be the most interesting conservation of mass that we've seen so far. Because so we have kind of a, uh, um, you know, a dual, a dual junction here. Okay. Okay. So on the left, we actually have two inputs. And so we have one input coming from the inductor. Okay, so this is Q sub L. We have another input coming from the, from the bottom resistor. So this is Q R1. We have an output from the top resistor. So that's Q R2. And then we have an output that's going to the capacitor and we'll call that Q sub C, okay? 
All right. And so if we put if we put all these together, then we can we're going to have the um, inputs on one side, and or the uh, the incoming flows on one side, and the outgoing flows on the other. And so we have Q sub L plus Q R one is equal to Q R two plus Q C. So this is incoming flows. And this is outgoing flows. All right. So now that we have now that we have this equation for conservation of mass of that of that junction, let's go ahead and start plugging in for the plugging in expressions for the cubes. Okay. And so I'll do them all kind of individually here. So let's start with QR1, okay? So the flow over resistor, remember, is delta P divided by R1, okay? Where delta P, remember, is the pressure difference on the, on the resistor, okay? And so here we're actually gonna have something, because remember before in the past, you know, our resistors were always connected to ground on the back end. But for this resistor right here, R1, it's not connected to ground on the back end. And so the pressure difference on R1 is actually going to be the same as the inductor. And so on the upstream side of the resistor here, we have PI of T. Okay? And then on the downstream side of the resistor, we have P sub C. Okay? And so the pressure difference across that R1 is going to be PI minus PC. <laughs> right, so here we have PI of T minus P sub C divided by R1. All right, now we have the flow rate across the second resistors. So we have QR2, okay? So R2 right here is connected to ground on the back end. And so the, um, the flow rate across it is just gonna be P sub C, which is the upstream pressure on R2, divided by R2, okay? Since backside of R2 is ground, okay? Right, and then finally we have Q sub C, and so Q sub C has the same expression as, as we've always had, and so this is just gonna be the capacitance multiplied by the time derivative of the pressure, okay? So those are all our expressions for the uh, for the flow rate, um, and so all we have to do is just kind of plug it back into our conservation of mass equation, rearrange the terms a little bit, and then that'll give us our second our second ODE. All right, any questions on any questions on this? Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and plug uh, plug all these in. Okay, and so we plug these in and we rearrange. Um, we get the following expression. Okay, so we have dpc dt is equal to one divided by c multiplied by q sub l plus pi of t minus p sub c divided by r1 minus p sub c divided by r2. And so this is our this is our second ODE. All 
right? And so we have our first ODE, we have our second ODE. And so now this is ready to, to plug into to plug into MEP. And so I have I have this one already prepared for you as well on the website. Okay. Um, and you know, and so the setup for this one is, is very similar. And so I'm not going to go through the setup again, but I do want to run the code because I do want to motivate what we're going to talk about on, on Tuesday, which has to do with tune. Okay. And so I'll give everyone a chance to kind of write all this down. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch to the computer really fast to run the other two, to run the other script. Okay. And so before I do that, are there, are there any questions on, on this? Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, switch back to the computer here. Okay. And unfortunately, I didn't have these downloaded because I, I didn't know if we were gonna get to this part today, but, but we did, which is good. So let me go ahead and download this. Actually, excuse me for excuse me for. Hey guys, hey guys, can you guys keep down here? I'm not on that. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. And so let me go ahead and run this code. And so the setup for this is, is very uh, is very similar, okay? And so here on the on the function code, I've defined my ODEs. And then here on my driver code, this looks kind of very similar. So let me go ahead and run this. I can only run with a valid name. Of course it has a valid name. Oh, because I've already downloaded it, okay. <laughs> so I did download it, I was prepared. All right, and so if we run the code, here is our solutions, right? And so we have the, uh, here I'm running it for 15 seconds. And so that's why you see a lot more, uh, a lot more kind of peaks and valleys, okay? Right, and so we have our solutions here that look like sinusoids, right? And so I, I wanna kind of draw your attention to, um, you know, to what the sinusoids look like, okay? And so let's look, let's look for instance at the, at the pressure on the capacitor, okay? Um, actually, let's look at the flow. Okay, so with the flow, you can see that we have a sinusoid here, but the mean value here is about, you know, it's about forty. Okay, it has a mean value of about forty, and the peak-to-peak -peak, um, difference here is about twenty-five to fifty-five. I suppose to say peak to peak. Okay. Okay. And so that's what we observe, right? And so that's all that all that is is fine. Uh, but what if we don't want to have these values, right? Because remember, you know, the whole point of these the whole point of these lump parameter models is that they're supposed to be models or they're supposed to be representations um, of our cardiovascular system. And so it would be great if we can kind of manipulate these circuits so that we get a flow and a pressure to actually match what a real patient would have, right? Because we want these, we want these circuits to represent, you know, maybe the flow inside yourself or maybe the flow inside your best buddy or flow inside your grandma or your, or your parents, right? Um, and so in order to do that, we have to match these circuit outputs. We have to match these solution outputs to actual data that other people have, right? And so this would work, you know, if you have a person with a with a mean flow rate of forty milliliters per second, um, you know. But that's but that's kind of low. So that's that's kind of like for for a kid. And so if you wanted to use the circuit to model like an adult, you know, this wouldn't work because you know the adult is going to have different data. And so what we're going to learn on Tuesday is that we can actually manipulate the the values of the resistances and capacitances of the inductors so that we kind of manipulate the, uh, the outputs to match what, our, what, uh, what people can actually get, okay? And so that, that process of manipulating those circuit values is called tuning, okay? 
And so on Tuesday, we'll talk about what tuning is and how we can actually, you know, choose these values more intelligently to get them to match outputs. Okay. All right. Any final questions before we, we wrap it up for the week? These two files, they're linked up together, right? So yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you need to down, make sure they're all in the same folder and then um, you can run them all, run them all together. All right. And so that's all I got planned for this week. And so thank you guys for, for coming today. Uh, I know it's a busy week. I'm sure you guys are really stressed, but uh, you know, I do appreciate you guys coming out. Okay. So have a great weekend, everyone. Um, if you have questions on some vascular or anything, you know, please, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, and I'll see you guys next week. I right, prime any final questions before I, uh, I close it up. Uh -huh, yes, Professor. Uh, is there a real life analogy to the examples that we did today, or these are just examples for the sake of practice? So they, they are they are fairly simplistic, and so you know it, you can you can probably use them to model like a single blood vessel. Single. Uh, but for an entire system, like you would have to use more sophisticated circuits, and so they're mostly educational. But you know if you're doing just a single blood vessel, then they can work from that as well. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.